Welcome to the third episode of On the Sofa with Nick. Today I'm joined by John Curran from Designed for Learning and from the e-learning network. So we're going to get to know John a little bit more and all about his e-learning business. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and how you ended up um, being an expert in e-learning. All oh, right. Oh, an expert. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, I, I guess I probably am now. Um, I'm still learning new stuff, though, like yeah. anybody. How did I get here? Well, it's a, a long journey. I don't, I don't want to spend too long on it, but um, I mean, I ended up uh, in this area, in beautiful Devon. I call my home now yeah. because I joined the Royal Navy. So um, I was at Dartmouth Naval College. Uh, yeah. met a beautiful Brixham girl. Yeah. Uh, settled <laughs> in Brixham, and I'm still there. I, still, I now consider Devon my home, and particularly Brixham. So, so that's what brings me here. Um, I, at some point, I left the Navy. And I joined uh, Rakel Electronics and uh, then started my career sort of outside the Navy. And I, Rakel Electronics were in, into things like uh, uh, navigation systems. So I wrote software user guides. And basically that's how I got, got, got started out, outside okay. the, uh, the Navy. Originally I'm from Dublin. So yeah, so a lot of my relations are still back, back in Dublin. Yeah. I still work with clients in, in Ireland. I work with a, a company in, in Northern Ireland, in Belfast as well. But now, yeah, now I'm very firmly, firmly rooted in, 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 in Devon. Well, Brixham's a lovely place to live. Absolutely, it's it right. is, yes, yes. I don't quite, quite have well. a sea view, but, uh, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's only a five minute walk to sea to sea, which is that. Uh, cool. So how did you start to um, get into the e-learning business? How did you? Well, so after, well, I, I worked for Rakel for about three years, developing user Rachel. guides. So Rakel, they developed um, navigation systems. Okay. So that's the connection with the Navy. So I did, I studied um, marine technology at university. So, so I had a degree in basically an engineering degree uh, to work for Rakel writing software user guides. And then I, along came the Apple Mac in 1984 yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was just an amazing thing. And, uh, and we tried to buy one for Rakel, we did in the end. What, was that one bright coloured ones? No, they bright coloured before, before that. that the very I think first. maybe my first introduction to the Apple. 10 inch Apple, the 10 inch ah. Apple Mac. It had no hard disk, two, had used two floppy drives. Cost me three and a half thousand pounds Ouch. in 1985, <laughs> which doesn't sound so bad now. Well, too, it does sound quite bad, but, yeah, but back, back then, then that was, that was, I had to get a bank loan for it. Uh, the laser printer was five and a half thousand. Ouch. So that was a, yeah, it was big, big. <laughs> but, but it gave me the ability to, to do amazing stuff because PCs were still green text. Yeah. And yeah. you had to type in uh, open bracket B, close bracket B to make something go bold. Yeah. So actually the Apple Mac, even though it was a tiny screen, it was revolutionary. So uh, based on that, I started my own business. Uh, and then uh, we uh, initially writing software user guides, but then um, I came across the ability to develop online help systems. Okay. So that's when I first got into uh, Hypertext. Yeah. There's a really brilliant program on the Apple Mac called uh, Hypercard. Right. And, uh, and well, <laughs> some sort of effectively, effectively like an early website, a tech, almost like really? an early website. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant bit of software. So I got into doing that, started developing online help systems for Windows, so using some, some specialist software. Uh, and then from that, I became a sort of real sort of geek in, in hypertext markup language. <laughs> uh, and then suddenly, a couple of years later, this thing called the web yeah. came out. <laughs> And uh, I thought, well, that's useful. We could do, I could I use that to do, to do other things for, for various clients. So we built, I worked with Vodafone, built one of their first, helped, helped them build one of their first intranets. Okay. So the internal web, we started yeah. building websites for clients back in the, in, in the early days. So yeah, that was, uh, that was. That'd be uh, really exciting times. That's all. They were, they were. I mean, I, under, I, I was around in pre-internet, but we kind yeah. of grew up with the internet it as is, it were. Yeah, well. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these sort of, not baby boomer. I'm, I think I'm, I'm the end, the tail end of baby boomer. Right. I'm not expected to know about technology, but, but for me, it was really interesting to sort of grow up yeah, with, it, with this, this sort of stuff. Developing. I remember having my first email on CompuServe.com. Right. Uh, and having nobody I could email. So I remember saying to my partner, I've got an email address. And he said, so what? And I, to tell him to go and open one. Yes. And he said, he'll never catch on. You know, and Brilliant. he said the same about HTML, but uh, you know, little, little, did, little did he know. So uh, yeah, so from that oh, yeah. then, sort of uh, started developing websites and, uh, and then moved into what I'd probably loosely call information management. So intranets, online sort of, you know, trans uh, online sort of um, access to information. Okay. So searching information, things like open text sort of, it was really the, the, those days when sort of you know suddenly putting documents online and being able to search them was sort of a that cool was all, thing to yeah, do. It was cost, cool, yeah, it's all the new and cool. Yeah, they pay like forty grand for a bit of software to do that. So. 
And then from that moved into knowledge management, so that was a bit more sort of higher level. Right. And then the company, the consultancy I work with, uh, recognised actually, well, maybe what's going to be big is is learning online. Yeah. And so that's probably when when I sort of first got into into bit e- of a spark there. This new industry is going to yes, be. And I think I, I realised. I mean, I I I I've been a trainer in the navy as well, so I recognised actually, you know, that that's an interesting that's an interesting mm. channel to 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 deliver learning. And yeah, so basically We're I'm just sort of still in the same sort of. Rut. It's good though. Yeah, we just take it for granted that that's how we learn now. Though I think as well, my first point of call is is to go online to find some information to go and learn mm. about a topic. Like if something pops up in my head, you just Google it. And but that is second nature now. But it must have been quite interesting to for, to see that industry develop, to see the the, the, the different ways that people have changed and how they de- decide that they're going to find information, how they're going to learn, and then seeing people at computers learning rather than. Just in person, it is, and it's interesting when you when you think back. Well, you know, if you needed to to find out something back, you know, twenty years ago, it was tough. You know, you had to like find a book or something, and even <laughs> find the library had a book. Uh, whereas now you can go straight onto Google and, yeah, and, and, so, and sort of get a whole r- richness of. I mean, obviously not all reports on Google is brilliant, but but you know, once you get good at sort of filtering and recognizing you know, where to go and where to find stuff, yeah. then it's a great place to to find stuff. Although I would clearly make a distinction between what I call information. And learning. Yep. <laughs> so, so my company is called Designed for Learning. So we can't design learning. So, so what we what we aim to do online or offline is is design learning interventions. So, so you know the idea how can you put how can you organize informational content yep. in order to help somebody learn something effectively. Well, we talked about this off camera previously about you can learn things for free on YouTube and Google, but it's never quite right. It's never fully organized. It's never fully structured. No. You get little bits of information. And that's a it's good, never and that, quite. And that's a good question, Nick. So who, who, who gives it that structure? You. <laughs> Actually, the teacher. The, the teacher. teacher. So, so, yeah. so, you know, that's what, you know, effectively you're in that role. So whether you're offline in a classroom or online, the role of the teacher, and I think I've been blogging about it recently, that, you know, the, the role of the teacher is still key. So the person who sort of decides yeah. what it, you know, what, what will get people to from A to B more quickly, more effectively, more efficiently. So of course you can search on Google to how to do social media, but there'll be such a such a varied amount so of much. stuff, different yeah. levels that people get really sim- quickly confused. So so the role of the teacher is to identify well what are the audience, what what will what will make their lives better today and tomorrow. Yeah. And I think you know, and whether you're whether you're in a classroom or whether you're online. You know that role of the teacher, thankfully, is still yeah. still really yes. really key. Still really important, that yeah. And th- there's something about uh, you know trusting that person. You know the the randomness of information that you find on YouTube is is from lots and lots of different people that you have no idea where they are. But when you invest in teaching and uh, learning from from a, a kind of an established teacher or, or an established website or course creator, um, you know that you're going to get quality information. Yeah. rather than the bits, uh, the, uh, a couple of episodes absolutely. of this trainer and well, a couple absolutely. of episodes I, I of this trainer. I, trust is, is a big, is a big yeah. part of it. I mean, you think about back to your days at school, you know, you had certain teachers who sort of, sort of you know, sort of really made a difference, other ones that didn't. And it was, about, it was about that you had that relationship or that trust, or you knew that, you know, if they said, you know, this, try this, then you sort of, you know, you, 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 that, that sort of, it seemed to you to be the, that, that, oh yes, I'll do that, that works. So and in the same way, as you, as you say, so, so people, you know, I think the, you know, we, you can find st- tons of stuff online, but but it's really good if you've got a guide. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about possibly helping entrepreneurs create online courses. I've had a, we spoke about this as well before. I've had a go at creating online courses. It's not that easy. It's quite difficult. I think I made about a thirty-two or thirty-six video series on how to teach Twitter, and I put it on. Um, that sounds like a lot of videos to teach someone how to teach Twitter. <laughs> Use Twitter. Um, it was more than that, but I had a WordPress website and a membership plugin that I created, and then you have to sort out the payment portals, and it was a bit of a nightmare, really. So, have you got any better advice for how other people can maybe take their skills, create online courses, and build a business from it online? Like, what practical steps can you give us, and what sort of strategy and mindset do they need to be able to execute that effectively? Okay. Well, as you can imagine, Nick, it looks easier than, than it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of things coming together, a lot of technologies, a lot of the, you know, how you build a successful course on what we call in the business a pedagogy. So the way you, the way you build, so the way it's the science of how people learn. Right. Okay. Actually, specifically, children, pe- as in pedagogy. 
Uh, actually, I tend to use the term andragogy, which is the way adults learn. Right. So there's These some, principles, new words there's some principles there about how you know what 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 take how you take somebody on a learning journey. Okay. Uh, and I, I personally like the idea of what we call a learning pathway. So you think, well, where are they now? And where do you want to take them? And so, and yep. so you design your, your learning activities in order to take them from A to B. So it's not a case of just giving them tons of stuff. It's a case of like take, taking them along, uh, 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 along a journey. Okay. So it's, it, it, it's not, you know, there's no simple way, simple way to do it, but you can start simple and then ramp it up. So, so I work a lot with, with training companies who sometimes deliver quite complicated courses. So the first place I always start is say, well, do something really simple. For, for a basic audience. Okay, yeah. That means it's shorter, it's easy to put together. Yeah. It's quite a simple message. And people then, steps. And once again, it's about building trust. The people then, yes, people sort of, oh, that was really good. Yeah. Please do more. So, so probably doing 32 hours worth is probably, well, please do less. Yeah, my, you're, you're laughing now because the course was actually called Zero to Expert. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> In so, one yeah, course. So, so actually, it's, zero, it's actually zero to, I know just enough to, yeah. to give me some confidence to do something. So we're not, we're not, we're, this is, you're not doing a university degree. Uh, you know, I work at universities and you don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to take people from A to B to give them, that, I think it's about confidence building. So that they, that they want to come away from thinking, yes, I, I understand that, yeah. and I can do that. And not overwhelmed no, by absolutely. the really I mean, I, you know, we're all guilty. I'm an expert, so, so I'm guilty of, of over-delivering sometimes. Yeah, and people yeah. say, John, I wish you'd stopped half an hour in. Uh, you know, <laughs> that was we, enough we, we could have gone away then and done something. You know, that one, an, an hour later, I'm thinking, oh my God, it's, 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 everything's spinning. So yeah, I think to keep it simple. Um, the, the tools there out there we'll be talking later are a lot better yeah. and just, just you know, I think just uh, just keep you know little little baby steps to, to start with it'll okay. make your job easier and it'll also just get, start to build trust with your your intended audience so that's a really good point so so when I wanted I've tried to do everything I tried to create a course where it was all in one it was zero to expert for Twitter I broke it down into beginner intermediate and expert but I launched the whole thing at once um, so that's good advice, maybe to just chunk it, maybe release the beginner section, and, and if they want more, Absolutely. moved on I, to the more advanced. You know, stuff. I'm, a, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking at doing some, 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 some uh, online training for entrepreneurs. I think it's a really interesting okay. area. Watch Dragons Den. Yeah. And a big fan of lean startup and the minimal minimum viable product. Yeah. So clearly, get something out there, which at the beginner level, yeah. uh, uh, get some, get some sort of you know traction with it. Talk to Nick about you know get yeah. social media going on it, get a buzz around it. I, I think you know, learning is is the best form of, of sort of content marketing. Yeah. If you can teach your customers something about what you do or, or the service you operate or whatever, yeah. then then that that's a massively massively important trust building exercise. That's a really good point. We used to do a social media cafe. We used to do like uh, talks on content marketing, social media marketing. That helped build trust. Helped build confidence that you knew what you're talking about. Helped build trust in the audience. But more importantly, it helped bring in business, help generate some business. Okay, so let's say that um, we can get our online courses up. We decide what platform we're going to use. Um, what marketing ideas can you give? You know, should we upload it to kind of Udemy to sell through there, sell through our own platform? What ideas can you give to people who want to create online courses and monetize them to actually market them and get some sales? Yeah. Well, I think like anything on the web, it, it's sort of the, the niche is, is really, really critical. So being really clear yeah. about who your course is for and what level it's for, for that we're discussing it about whether beginner or yeah. expert, I think it's really, so this is a basic course on this for these basic people is, is, yeah. is really important. And except that, you know, marketing on the web is, is always tricky because the web is a very big place. So things like um, putting a, um, maybe a sort of a, a little taster um, um, course on Udemy, for example, is, is, a, is, is a good thing yeah. to do. But, but probably actually just creating a sort of a, a site that, that really sort of, sort of is clear about who the course is aimed at. So in some ways it's more about telling people about the course than it's about yeah. the course itself. Like any training thing, actually, if you, if you look any training, uh, you don't get to experience it until you go on it. Sure, yeah. So that's an interesting thing that, well, you spend, you know, 400 pounds going on a training course, but you haven't been on it. Yeah. So what you're buying is the, uh, what they're telling you is on the this. idea of it. And, and in what? some ways that applies online as well as offline. So, so a good example maybe is uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the E-Myth. Um, yep. It's a book written by, I forget his name now, in, in, in the States uh, a few years ago now, but it's been updated since. Yeah, we'll uh, put that built, link in the bio so everyone can see it. Yeah, and they built a brilliant uh, website, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so online training course around the E-Myth. So, so, you, so the, the, I think the model now is you, you buy, so if you're an expert, you write the book. 
Yeah. You, you talk about the book at TEDx. <laughs> So that, that's for the book never makes a lot of money, not business books generally. Yeah, so what you do, brand builder. So, well, yeah, so yeah. what you do now is you, you build a course of the book. Yeah. So, and so if you look at the e-myth online, you'll see a lovely, beautifully crafted site, yeah. which effectively is, is, you know, is, is, is around the, uh, the, the, online, the online learning. And I think for me, that, that's, that's a really good example of, of how to do it, do okay, it properly. Well, look Obviously, that. some investment's gone into that, but it, it still looks quite simple. It's yeah. clear what, what, you, what you're going to learn on the course uh, without actually doing, doing, doing the course. So very specific about who you're targeting, absolutely, what the message absolutely. is, but without giving away yeah. too much of the actual course. Ab- exactly. What exactly. they're going to benefit from it, I yes, guess. Yes, and I think that's a really good example of getting that right. Yeah. Really good example of so that's going to yeah that's going to really help when it comes to the other stuff like uh, possibly putting some free content on YouTube doing you know the usual stuff like social media marketing running your Facebook ads or anything like that that's really going to help when you know who the audience is <laughs> When you know who your desired audience is, who you want to buy your course, Absolutely. being really specific yes, yes. from the beginning, and then, who this is for. Exactly, and, and then once you know that, then you can go to the places where they go. So, so, so once you've really yeah. targeted that audience, you, you can you can find the other things that you know. So you can sort of offline or online, where where those sort sort of potential uh, learners are, are likely to be. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you're a sort of like scattergun approach to. This course could be for anybody, as we know on the web. That, that doesn't really quickly work. Yeah. dissipates any sort of any sort of. Uh, you know, it doesn't. If it, it doesn't say it's just for me, almost like we ha- we talk now in e-learning about personalization. Okay. So now actually that's more of an illusion than anything. But actually, if you can sort of talk to that person directly, it's a yeah. course for you and you only. Yeah. That's that's powerful. I guess that's the mindset to have when you're trying to market it. Is that you're you're you you've got one. I think we call it like an avatar where you, you, you've got one person in mind it might be you know yes. Susan who's 45 yes, years old who's like interested those, those in these personas yeah, yeah and you think right I'm marketing to this person and that's how you talk uh, absolutely that's the same sort of thing yes, yeah. yeah so that's really key you know find the right platforms to market on putting free content on but totally understanding who the product's for and and starting with basics rather than trying to go too technical or overcomplicated first you can work up to that later yes. on and, and imagine you're in a classroom and you're the teacher and they are sitting in front of you. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's those people. It's not, you know, they're not so sort of faceless people on the web. <laughs> Real they people. Are, they are people. Probably if they that. were in a classroom, yeah. they'd be going, I don't understand that or, or say that again. Or so, so actually, in some ways, yeah. I, I, I'm actually a big fan of sort of trialing something in a classroom. And yeah. I, I, do, I, I run, strangely, I run face-to-face courses as well. Okay. Um, so you know, I class myself as a learning designer. So, so, so I just take something we we want to teach somebody something, yeah. whether that's in a classroom, whether it's online, or whether it's a blended approach, a mix of both. Uh, you know, it's the same, the same, the same design goes goes into that. It's just the yeah. channel and the way we do it is different. It's interesting. Different. Yeah, yeah. Just teaching, understanding the process of how somebody else is going to learn from Absolutely. you is which, key which to is how you're going to deliver we come, it. We come back to that word again, pedagogy, which is yeah. the science of that. Let's we'll Google it. Yeah, so <laughs> Google page pedagogy and Google right pedagogy. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about how uh, potential course creators could sell stuff online, but you do something different. Let's talk a little bit about your business and the marketing that you do for yours. Yours is not so much that you create courses to monetize. You offer course creation as a service. Um, I guess higher quality courses, interactive. Co- like if I was going to make a course, it would be this. I'd be on the camera talking, telling somebody how to do something and screen recording. Yours go a bit further than that. So tell us about your courses and and if you don't mind, tell us how you could market and how you find clients. Okay, so so mainly I've worked with with, with partners, so so some larger development companies. So so I work with them on sort of doing some of the learning design and also working on some of the harder projects. So because customers don't always have a clear understanding of what e-learning or online learning is. Yeah. So I'll help them think through, well, what, you know, what, what strategies might, 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 they, might they take in order to do that. So, so, but then also, more recently, I, I've been working the, directly with, with uh, uh, for the first time, ed- education establishments. So they're thinking, well, how, how can we move our uh, uh, learning online to, to, to especially with, you know, get more students from, from around, uh, uh, around the world? But more recently, of course, I, I'm thinking, well, actually, as I'm helping people build all these courses, then it wouldn't be nice to have some courses myself. <laughs> I think the classic thing, you know, my business is a service business, yep. so it wouldn't be great to have some products. Uh, uh, so, so one thing I'm looking at is, uh, one of the areas I'm looking at is entrepreneurs, yeah. and also I'm looking at another couple of partners on, how, on, on, on uh, 
building courses that um, for what we call off 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 the shelf. Of course, once you build a course like that, then it suddenly becomes more or less about building the courses and more about marketing them. Yeah. So sure. not, I, you know, I don't pretend to be a marketing expert. So I I would normally work with people like yourself. Yeah, find somebody to, to actually work. We got this brilliant course. So I think it's very important to 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 put the platform and the content together so it really is a great experience. Yeah. But even you can still make the best course on the, on the planet. But if you don't market that successfully, yeah. then then you know, then, and sadly it'll be it'll be the greatest course, but but people won't won't do it. I think part of it as well was was what you just mentioned about making the best course that you possibly can. I want to pay for and, and <laughs> it was only a dollar trial. I think you had a seven or fourteen day trial for this course for a dollar and then it was probably, I don't know, fifty dollars a month or something, whatever it was. And I I got in there and the experience of using it was horrendous. He'd actually built it in a forum, you know, in a forum where you drop it down yes, and, yes. The, and, and each, each module was inside a forum. I think that's just, they just didn't know how to build the course. And it was, the, it was so bad that obviously there's no way I was going to continue after the free trial. I don't even know how good the content was because it was so hard to use. So I think that's partly about, you know, the user experience, but it's about, that's also about building customer loyalty, isn't it? If they, if they enjoy the experience, um, that's probably going to help you out with your marketing because they're probably going to start to recommend it to their friends. Uh, if they, if it's exactly the opposite and you, you build a rubbishy experience for somebody, and that's just not going to help at all. There's no way they're going to start recommending that to other people. Um, they're certainly not going to, going to help you in any way in social or recommend or posting, or even becoming an affiliate or anything like that or trying to make any money out of it. <laughs> So I think, yeah, key is going to be creating a really, really good experience for the person who logs into yeah. the course, course to use it in the first place. I mean, I think, I mean, I mean I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, you know, good UI, good user experience as well. So, so yeah, and sadly, a lot of LMSs, the one I mentioned, their, their user interface is not, it's not, the user experience is not the best in the, in the world. Look at the e-myth, it is, it's really, really good. So, yeah, so, you know, we, I, think, I don't think learning platforms have quite got there yet. Well, yeah. the things like Udemy, actually, their user experience is, re is really good. Udemy is quite good. They've got good mobile experience now yes, which we yes, didn't so have yes, before uh, and they've updated so, so that, 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 that is good I mean I, I developed some social media um, 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 programs for Dell uh, their 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 sort of platform is is, is pretty good as well yeah. lots of recommends tons of recommends for those courses in Spanish so clearly mm. Dell are big in Spain and it's <laughs> okay. pretty funny all these five stars and all this Spanish I don't really understand Spanish but I think well five stars whatever they're five saying stars must, must be, be good. must be good but um, <laughs> but yes yeah, so I think I think if you if you if you do build a great course and, and the learners, you know, uh, um, f find it really, really valuable, then of course, then they are great, great sort of. They'll, they'll, they'll happily share that because they think, oh, it's a great teacher. That yeah. I love that course. So I think that that is one key aspect of you know, once you help somebody, once you teach somebody something, a bit like the you know your best teacher at school, yeah. that, that becomes a really sort of quite a strong bond. So yeah, you get so a positive you, experience that you're going to talk about. Yes, and if you taught somebody one thing, then they'd like probably going to want to learn. So so if you they teach somebody how to use Twitter, then then probably they want to want to come back and learn yeah. LinkedIn or, yeah, or sure. Facebook. Yeah. So so you know that's once again once again back to that issue of trust. You know, so I think that's a really strong. Okay. And the idea of authority, but also authenticity. Uh, you know, I think is is, is, yeah, is really important in learning. That is really key. Yeah, that yeah, authenticity, like transparency. It's just to tell people what what is real. There's a lot of fluff around online courses. There's a big American market where so there's a ton of hype around marketing and brand building and and making money online. I know that doesn't wash so well in the UK. It's quite big in America. We no. see these massive, massive product launches and they look successful. You never really know. But I think w in the UK, we're a bit more open to being totally transparent. You know, I do a vlog every week now about what's going wrong in the business. I'm quite happy to talk about it. But I tell the truth. But I think that's just, uh, people want to get to know me. Um, and I think that helps if you're just, yeah, clear, transparent, and, and um, like I say, just honest about what the, what's inside the course, what they're going to achieve from the course. and and be realistic about what they can expect that they're going to buy from you. Yes, and I think, you know, people, especially in the UK, I think we like to hear the warts and all. Yeah. So, so you know, we, we want, we don't believe that everything is always brilliant. It's all shiny, so, shiny. So, so actually, in fact, probably from a teacher, we expect the teacher to, to really highlight the, 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 you know, the, 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 the pitfalls yeah. as well as the things to do. So I yeah, think not that, gloss over though. That's not really important, that. you know, because we have that relationship of trust. So you, you can tell us about those things so hopefully we can avoid those things. Okay. So, yeah, that's a key, key part of teaching online as well.
Okay, so we've, we'll just quickly recap on what we've covered, which is kind of entrepreneurs who want to use their own skills to create online courses, um, a kind of a good course of action then, create something quite simple, don't go too techie over the top, so maybe an introductory course, put that, would you put that for free probably on Udemy initially? Try and build some awareness, yes, maybe. Yes, I mean, yes. And, and uh, you, I know, you, I you would, could yeah. change the pricing day by day on you. Yeah, so maybe put that out there for free. Um, yeah, building authority is, is, is key when using those sorts of platforms. But being very specific about what your audience, what audience you're going to target and what content you're going to create for that audience. Great advice. Um, so let's move on to you and your business, plans for the future. We know you create courses. You briefly talked about maybe um, creating some of your own courses and sell them. Do you want to talk about those and what, what ideas you've got? Or is that top secret? Yes, no, no <laughs> that's not top secret. Um, well, of course, uh, you know, it's, a very, it's a very sort of technology-based area. So, so I'll just, I mean, we had a, our, our big show each year called Learning Technologies up in London. Yep. We'll just come away from that. And there's a whole new load of things going on around, uh, particularly with mobile devices, uh, new platforms or platforms come coming out so I'm, I'm always keen to think well how can we use those how can we make that u user experience better but yes I think probably I, I'm sort of wanting to build the ultimate course and it's, it's a case of um, in my case deciding on what what topic so once yeah. again, I'm at that stage well what audience is really going to going to work yeah. for me commercially but also also that, that you know I, I have enough enough content and enough understanding of in order to to teach people so one, one area I'm looking at is, is actually um, actually, uh, I know somebody who works with uh, entrepreneurs, uh, on social entrepreneurs. Yeah. That maybe that's an area that where uh, where it could be could be interesting to create something 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 on, on online. So yeah, so hopefully yeah, I'm going to sort of um. So maybe like help entrepreneurs what with with structure or with like minimum. We talked briefly about minimal viable product. Like yeah, sort of sort of getting entrepreneurs. I don't think everyone understands what that is. What minimal viable product really means. I mean, yes. I understand it and I completely ignored it many a times. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe just explain that because that could be a good course for for wannabe entrepreneurs to go yes. through. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, so I guess it, it's sort of um. Well, I think you know I'm a big fan of Dragon's Den. Yeah. And, and I think you know there's a lot of people out there who sort of have a great idea. I think well we start our own business and you know I think the UK is very good for, for encouraging people to, to, to go into business. But but as you we and I know, business is, is quite complex, there's a lot yeah. of things to do, a lot of things to get right, so it's very hard to do all that on your own initially. So I think just helping people do you know, understand well, you know, what can we do to, to get if you buy an audio business book these days, uh, go out and buy a business book. It's all about accounting and stuff. Yeah. But actually, you and I know it's, it's not about accounting, it's about <laughs> it's about it's about social media, it's about yeah. marketing, it's about product so so a whole lot I mean lean startup is a great book yeah so, so it talks about actually well you know what you need to do is focus on getting that first product to market so the minimum viable is, is basically it is the minimum you can do to make a product that is just about acceptable to somebody yep. so so th okay th they may not pay a lot for it initially but but the idea is it, it tests the market so it uses what we use in projects called the agile approach yeah so, so we don't spend eight Ten months developing an online learning program. We spend two weeks, and we'll show it to some learners, and they right. go, "That's brilliant, and that is rubbish." And it's better <laughs> to get it after two weeks than after that, six yeah. months. Yeah. So we said, "Okay, well, what's rubbish? So we fix it, put it out again." Yeah. So then after two months, you've got a pretty good course. Got a good uh, understanding of what people want. Absolutely, and the exact same applies to to any product. So so you know you, you put the product out there. I think that'd you, be a good you, course you know, to create. Uh, Yes, I think so. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so I, I mean, I, I don't think there is a course on, on the lean startup, but but probably but, not. But but you know, that's a, that's that, that's the sort of a, 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 a you know sort of thing that would you know would I, I guess appeal to to ent entrepreneurs. Because I don't think I don't think you can teach entrepreneurship, but you can certainly teach entrepreneurs to put systems in place. <laughs> yes, yes. I think entrepreneurs are almost a, a mindset or a lifestyle. Um, almost like a calling, I'd say, if it was a bit more spiritual. Yes. Um, but I think. I think many entrepreneurs don't, aren't really well structured, very big ideas people, um, maybe not so good at executing those ideas no, in the right order. And I think that's, that's what's interesting because most, uh, most entrepreneurs start out with a great idea and they're often, quite, they're often very good at something. Yeah. But being good at something doesn't necessarily mean you can turn that something in, 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 into a business. One of the reasons I really like the e-myth is, is what it gets you to do is think about your business as a franchise. So yeah. it doesn't say it doesn't it doesn't say it means you have to have a franchise, uh, or, but what it says well look imagine 
you want to replicate this business beyond yourself. Yeah. And that's a really, really, really good, 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 good thing to con consider. So in other words, how does this business live yourself. outside of me? Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, you know, and and I think you know, I've seen lots of businesses. I've been involved in, in a few businesses where you grow to a certain amount, and then making that 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 next step is really, really, really tough yeah. because of things like systems and processes. Sort of stuff, sort of stuff that corporates do really well, uh, but but seem to most entrepreneurs pretty boring. Yeah. And they don't want to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so yeah. So I think if you can sort of uh, if you can recognize that at some point you need to do that, then I think I think that 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 that, that you know, is a, is a good thing for any growing business. To that's uh, that's a really interesting doing. point as well. I think this is the first business I've thought about this as well. Like. Uh, minimal viable product and how do I remove myself from the business it's been the first time and I've been in business what am I 37 23 years now 13 years I'm not that yeah, old yeah. <laughs> 13 years since I was 24 um, and everything's been built around what I can do whether yeah. it was you know the, the picture framing business so I used to make the picture frames you know how many picture frames can I make in a day without employing anybody how many hours can I sell yes. um, I, I, even with the social media that was totally kind of um like consultancy based time for money getting onto roundup tv is the first time that we could be able to create a product that i can be removed from where i'm not I, I don't need to be involved in the in the creation of roundup tv it can be done without me and i think that's just that's just a process you have to learn i think and you have to think about it and so i mean i, I wish I'd, if i'd have taken a course on lean startup or on minimal vile product yes. 10 years ago uh, we might have got there a little bit earlier. L likewise, likewise, <laughs> you know, and, and in some ways that, that's why that's why those books appeal to me because actually they're, they're, it's written down in those books and the things that I I should have done. Yeah. So I think I, that's, that's what that, yeah, that's, that's that's a strong message. Yeah. That you know, that, you know cut. You know, take some shortcuts. Read one of these books and, yeah. and pick up some. Give these some, books out of school. Some yeah, exactly. Some of the, some some of the some some of the ideas. I, I think you know there. That's uh, that there's there's so much there's so much richness in, in in them when you when you're trying when you're trying to, to build business. It's not for everybody. So yeah. so I mean I, I when I first started my own business I worked for Business Link uh, and they used to talk oh, disparagingly yeah. about lifestyle businesses. <laughs> uh, in other words, businesses that people start because they like making yeah. cakes yeah. or importing coffee or something. And uh, and so you know, e myth doesn't really work for those. So some some people just want to make cakes and, yeah. and sell them and make enough money to 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 live on. And you enjoy yeah. you enjoy the doing. Doesn't have to be a big scalable business. Exactly. If that's not so, what you're after. So, yeah, but I think there there is. But so so you you so I did decide. Yes, I'm happy with a lifestyle business. I make my fifty k yeah. year, whatever it is, and whatever, and uh, uh, and I'm happy. happy or that. you say, well, actually, no, I need to. I want to actually you know, make turn this into a proper business. Yeah. Probably like most people on dragons then want to, so then you have to really take that that shift, uh, and so yeah, and and, yeah. and and you know and basically, what, what you know, the device is look upon it as a franchise. Yeah, how does this business run and without me? And it's not until you do that that I think you can really cool. grow grow properly. Yeah, makes sense. I think we've covered quite a lot. <laughs> Good. Shall we cover like where people can find you if they need your yes. services, yes. websites, yes, uh, any social media channels. Give it a plug. Okay. Oh, yes, well, we're so going to talk about. Um, we'll just almost give a quick plug about the uh, e-learning network. Yes. Network. So, yes. That's yes, the so one. I'm, so give I'm that a plug as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so I also. So I, I. I obviously run Designed for Learning, my my own business, where I help people put together uh, online courses, e-learning courses. Uh, I work with lots of lots of partners as well. But I'm also chair of the e-learning network, which is a not-for-profit organisation in the UK, which sort of is a sort of professional body for people involved in 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 e-learning. Uh, it's uh, it's only twenty nine pounds to join, and we run workshops and events throughout the year. We have a conference in November, so if you're thinking about about doing something uh, in the way of online courses or e learning, then certainly I'd rec definitely recommend uh, uh, network. joining the the uh, the e learning network. And I'm, I've been chair of the last two years, so I, so I feel it's only right that I, I give the the e learning network a plug. I, I put a lot of I put a lot of hours into it. A lot of the board directors do as well. So it's uh, yeah. so it's uh, you know I think we're we're doing it for the for the benefit of of. of of the industry uh, generally, yeah. not that yeah. we, don't, we don't have any anything personal, personal to gain from it. And yeah. otherwise, I'm on I'm on Twitter. I'm I'm blogging. I'm a big fan of blogging. I'm not as, not as much as I, as I should do, yeah. like like all of us. Quite a commitment. And, and yeah, and hopefully uh, some 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 you'll see me running some online courses soon. Too. Website? What's the website? It's uh, designed for learning. So www.designedforlearning.co.uk dot uk there you go and i'll put it i'll put all the links in the uh show notes as well so you can uh, click through and have a look um 
I think we've covered everything. Brilliant. Thanks for joining me on the sofa. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> it's been an interesting experience. <laughs> it's good fun. <laughs> See you later.